Hello, everyone. Welcome to this data import tutorial for your upkeep parts. My name is Renee, and I am a product expert here at Upkeep. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to import your parts into the system for the first time. Uh, you do have the option to create parts manually as well, in one by one. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do this in bulk. That way, it can overall save you time and just effort in importing this all at once. So for today's agenda, we'll just do a quick overview and demonstration on what parts are and how it looks like actually importing your parts into the system for the first time. And then finally, we'll just end with the resources that you have available as well. So a little overview on parts, uh, on the parts tab, excuse me. You have the option to import new parts into the system for the first time. Uh, you also have the option to export your currently existing parts list as well. You have the option to also update your currently existing parts list as well. So if you need to, let's say, update the name or the location in bulk, for example, you have the option to do that in bulk as well. Uh, but in today's video, we will just show you how to import new parts into the system for the first time. Now there is uh, a CSV limit of 10 megabytes. So if you have a file that is a little bit larger than that, I would recommend just uh, importing in, in batches. And just an overview on what parts are. This is your inventory or any consumables, just anything that you'll essentially need to repurchase eventually. And now let's actually go into the upkeep system and show you how that looks like for the first time. So once you log into your upkeep account, you'll be taken to the work orders tab, but we'll go into the parts and inventory section here. And then from here, you'll see the current parts list that I have listed here. You have the option to make um, to filter certain information, but you'll essentially see the name of the part, image status, and just all of this additional information that you can essentially import in bulk uh, besides the image itself. But that is the option you, and this is the just individual parts list that you have. And then as well, you have the option to um, view your set of parts list. And then you can also view this in a gallery view if you uh, like to look at your parts and in inventory through images. You have that option as well, but in this case, we'll just do the table view. And then in the top right hand side, as I mentioned before, you have the option to create parts manually in the system by clicking on that blue button. But in this case, we'll um, go ahead and click on these three dots right next to that and then click on import. But again, you also have the option to um, export that data as well, as I mentioned. We'll go ahead and click on import and this is going to take us to a separate page. Uh, and then if you want to start the import process live, you have the option to click on that. This is where you'll also um, include your uh, downloaded or the template that you created that you're going to import for the first time. You have the option to click on that as well here and just add and upload that file as well. Or you can do this live here. We'll just go ahead and um, download the template. And once you download the template, it is going to provide you a CSV template on file um, on your computer. And then you can start working on that um, as well. And then from here, you also have the option to export your current parts list and then also to view examples and tutorials. So I'll click on that just to show you how that looks like. And it is going to take you to our help center, which provides you easy to use, uh, easy to see pretty much how to steps on how to create that for the first time with images and step-by-step -step instructions. And then just a, a small guide on what is expected on each column when you are going to import your new data into the system. But uh, once you go ahead and click download template, um, you can use, you can do this through Microsoft Excel, you can do this through a CSV file, or you can do this through Google Sheets, but in this case, I am going to go ahead and just do this through Google Sheets, just to make it easy for everyone. And then this is exactly the same exact template that you'll see once you download that for the first time. So, um, as you can see in column A, and this is just importing notes, you just need to be sure to delete this column before importing. Um, so just make sure that everything is deleted here on column A. We're going to go ahead and delete that here for now. 
And then, um, so for row one, in this case, these are the title columns. So the ID, the name, the description. ID is only applicable if you are going to be bulk updating your parts list. But in this case, since we are creating new parts and importing that, we'll leave this blank and we're gonna start on uh, column B, which is the name of the part itself. But then you have additional information like the description of the part, the quantity, go back really quick, the quantity, the cost per unit, barcode if you have that information, the sample area. So if you have a specific bin number that you like to put maybe um, you know, in the first row bin three example, uh, or even a minimum quantity as well. So this is going to notify the admin when it hit, hits this certain threshold to notify you that um, it's hit its minimum quantity and it's time to repurchase uh, more parts. Any additional information that you would like to see as well, the location name would be super important if you have, um, you know, different inventory locations that you keep your um, specific parts in inventory at. Uh, category would be great if you want to group certain parts, pieces, or consumables together, or if you want to, um, yeah, uh, you have that option too as well. You can also mark this part as non-stock, so it'll just, you know, be in the system, but it will not notify you if it reaches zero or reaches a certain threshold or anything like that. It's just a non-stock part that you probably just purchased, um, you know, one-time use or anything like that. And then in column M, you have the option to include an asset that this particular part is associated with. So if you have maybe an HVAC unit or maybe a specialty piece of equipment and you have specific parts that you use for this specific piece of equipment, you can ass um, assign the asset it's itself. You also have the option to assign email um, or the user itself so, um, using their email address there as well. This is only going to be applicable if you have the user in the system already. So just keep that in mind. Or if you have a team as well, this will only be applicable if you've already set up your teams within Upkeep. Um, you'll put the team name there and any vendor customer information, you have that option too as well. But again, you would need to create this data in the system prior to um, importing your parts if that is the case. But in the future, let's say you just wanna get your parts in the system um, and then create your vendors or your users in the system afterwards. Again, you have the option to bulk update your parts as well. Um, but in this case, what we'll do is uh, since row two is the sample data that it is providing us, we'll just go ahead and delete that so we can just start with this fresh sheet. And again, because we are creating new parts, uh, column A is not applicable, so just leave that blank. And then we're gonna start with column B where it says the part name. All right, so now I've gone ahead and created my parts list. So as you can see here, I have it in a specific naming convention, just including the size of the part as well as the name of the part itself because all of my parts have different sizing, for example. So that is why I've created a different uh, parts information here with the name of the part as well as the sizing. So that is uh, column B. And then for column C, I can include a description of the part. But again, since I've added the sizing in the name, I've gone ahead and just skipped that. And then the quantity, what I currently have at hand, uh, this is going to be deducted or available for quantity when users are adding these specific parts to you know, their work orders or anything like that, they'll see that they have 10 pretty much available and then that's the only amount that they would be able to pull from uh, the parts and in inventory list. And then my cost per unit, I've just gone ahead and just did a default number of five. Barcode, if you have that information, you know sometimes people have the barcode or the QR code on the box itself where the parts live and then the area itself in column G is just the shelf number as well as the bin number that I have the specific parts located at. And then the minimum quantity on column H, this is going to notify me or any other admins that this particular part, once it reaches this uh, certain number, so number once it reaches five in stock, it's gonna notify you that it's currently low stock and then it's time to repurchase new ones. And the additional parts information here, 
you have that option to, so oh, sorry, you have the option to include any additional information that you think would be applicable or would be useful in the long run. Not always necessary, but I've seen people utilize that heavily. Uh, and then on column J, this is the location name. Now this is taken from your location, from your location tab specifically, and this is case sensitive. So if you misspell anything from your location name or anything like that here, it's not going to import that successfully for you. And then in the category section, as you can see here, I've uh, categorized my parts list that way. When I want to maybe only search up my callers, for example, I can easily just uh, filter by the specific category and see all my callers, not just limited to maybe the, the certain sizing or anything like that. And then in column L, uh, mark non-stock. I did mark certain ones non-stock, so this is just a one-time purchase. I'm not going to be repurchasing this, so if it reaches that certain threshold, so that number five, it's not going to notify me anymore because it's a non-stock part. And then here uh, on column M, you have the option to assign a particular asset. In this case, this is also case sensitive. And um, because it is case sensitive, I'm taking this information directly from my asset list. So in order to successfully or import this maybe just one time, would recommend creating your locations. And if your parts are associated to any assets to create those as well. And then from here, it's I've gone ahead and just left that blank because uh, I don't have my users in the system. I'll be creating that information as well as my vendor or customer information later down the line. So I can bulk update that um, when I have the chance to. So in this case, what I'll go ahead and do is just download this file and then import that into my upkeep account. So now that I've downloaded the file, I'm gonna go back to my upkeep system and then I'm gonna start the part import process here. And then again, I'm just gonna refresh this just to avoid any issues, but I'm gonna go ahead and start that import process. I'm gonna upload the data because I have, I've already created that CSV file um, through Google Sheets. Um, but again, you have the option to create this manually as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and import my parts and open that up there. And then from here, uh, this first page is just going to confirm if the first row contains a call, uh, the first row contains column names. Uh, we're gonna put yes, it does contain column names. And then here it's going to confirm mapping. So if the name is associated to the name and the, or the ID to the part ID, all of this information pretty much. Um, but in this case, because we're just importing this in for the first time, we are just gonna go ahead and click next. And then here is a super useful tool, but you have the option to show uh, any rows that have any problems. So you can toggle this on to see if there's an issue. Maybe you spelled a location name wrong, like I said, for example, and it's not gonna let you import that. It'll show that in that list here. But in this case, because everything is okay, everything looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish that up. And then it's gonna ask if you are ready to submit. We're just gonna click yes. And then from here, as you can see, the import was complete and it's gone ahead and created 48 new parts. So that is essentially how you would create your uh, parts and inventory and, and, and import that for the first time using a piece. Now I'm gonna go into the resources that you have available. We do have a technical support team that you have access to via live chat Monday through Friday. They're available 24 hours through live chat. You can reach out to them via email at info at onupkeep.com. And you also have the option to connect with them over the phone Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we do have our help center, a certification training course, and our maintenance community that we worked really hard to connect with uh, like-minded individuals. Then we do have webinars and certain training tutorials that would be helpful. But in the event that you need to connect with um, anyone from our technical support team and you want to just connect with them via live chat, um, I'm going to just go back to the Upkeep account. You can do this from your account on the web app or the mobile app, but you'll just click where it says contact us. And then on the far right, you'll see that um, pop up, that chat box that pops up. 
You also have the option to access our help center by clicking on that back arrow and then click, uh, you know, searching for any information. So if you want to search up import parts, for example, you can um, actually see how to do that here. And then it's going to give you some step by step instructions on how to do that for the first time. So you have that option too as well. But uh, that is it for today's uh, tutorial on how to. Um, import your parts into the system. Please let us know if you do happen to have any other questions. And I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. Take care.